a suntan. But I'm not talking about a neat and willful trophy tan, the kind of cynical, clinical, posy tan that's virgin on looking like it was done to you by a plastic surgeon. Like you're Peter Andre in all but name, cosmetic, narcissistic and meticulously vain. Like Hello magazine made you out of brown play-doh, like your skin's just a form of congealed creosote. But neither am I talking about that shade of brown that barely qualifies for the term. Radioactive, jaundiced damage. So beloved of football managers, daytime TV hosts and night club bouncers. King Sunbed, the hedonist jail warder. He surveys his realm and maintains his orange order. Now I'm talking about the deep burnished tones you get from incidental all summer outdoorsness. The kind of shaded, rounded browns has been out in morning, noon and evening sun. The sticky, muggy days of humid hazes. These piercing, cloudless days like an avalanche of lasers. It says I've been doing things. It says I've been walking on the bare mountaintops. I've been watering my allotment. I've been staying out too long with my friends in the swelter, eating ice cream that's already melted. I'm talking about the kind of brown that's so good, and so real, and so rich. You could call it James Brown. Get up, get on up, get up, get on up, stay on the scene, get on up, fuck your tanning machines. I'll tell you when you see it best, this golden celebration of being alive. End of June, service stations on the northbound M5. There's only two types of people there and there is no mistaking one for the other. There's those who've just been to Glastonbury and then there's the rest of them who really haven't. And the Glastonbury survivors of the Caucasian persuasion, they looked like they spent a week sat in their bath with an exploded catering pack of extra strong tea bags, brown as crispy chips, brown from being out in the sun all day and fucking loving it. And I love the way the sun shines, something I get to keep all through the night as my burnt skin radiates a tingly heat. And as a nighttime person, I get these lectures from early risers coming on all smug, sanctimonious and pious, saying that the best time for me to be awake would be the hour or two just after daybreak as the colour bleeds in from hiding in the night. And then I found out, they're right. But it's such a waste to put the morning as your day starts when you're bleary, murky, stumbling full of groans, burps and farts. Put the morning at the end of your day, after a long night of music, drugs, dancing, fucking, whatever it is that keeps you going. And those first rays will pour on into you chlorophyll fresh, nourishing, affirming, a primal bliss you recognise deep in your bones, making you know that you are part of something that is endless and true. Now I wanted an explanation for this peculiar thing, why we love the sensation of the sun on our skin, so I jumped to time dimension and asked Mr Darwin. He said, I tell you, it's evolution. Rapes who stood up and walked out of Africa, hardwired in your psyche as a longing to be back there, or at least to feel like you did then, when... It was warm and bright and your body got bathed in that rich sunlight. Because your love of sunshine on your face is a love that's as old as the human race. And I know, I know about the skin cancer thing, but I find it hard to take a health risk warning for people who tell me that the answer is to slather myself in chemicals that cause cancer. The sun doesn't give me half the fear of the nanoparticles I use to make the new lotions clear. If I'm going to cop it, at least let it be payback for feeling so connected, alive and free. For free. Rather than taking my life's precious few sunny days and spoiling them all by smearing my face, vivisecting myself with this corporate chemical effluent goo from an expensive tube that won't biodegrade until after I do. You can stay at home with your melanoma paranoia. Boy, I got a better thing to do. Because here comes the sun. Here comes the sun, and I say, 